progress. Welcome to our global partners. Before we get started on today's BM Live, I am absolutely thrilled to have everybody joining us today. And joining me are two exceptional guests, Ophir and Tracy Ann. Before we get started, I want to just do a few reminders. Like all VM Lives, today's VM Live is being recorded and we're going to offer it on demand. About 24 to 48 hours after we've aired live, you will be able to catch our on demand sessions from Partner Connect. You'll look at the far right of your VM Live page. I'm in the page of Partner Connect and you'll see VM Live. We are live because we are helping you, our partners, learn, market, sell, and deliver on VMware's product solutions and tools. By being live, especially on these thought leadership sessions, you are um, welcome to engage with us. To engage with us throughout today's VM Live, we are encouraging you to post your questions and comments, and, and comments are welcome in the Q&A. And with that, it is my pleasure, Tracy Ann, to have you back with us for another exciting thought leadership VM Live. I'll turn it over to you and I'll stop sharing. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thanks, Teresa, really appreciate it. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, delighted to be here with you. We really appreciate you joining today. And I'm thrilled to introduce one of our valued partners, Ophi Abakasas, co-founder and CEO of TerraSky. Uh, so great to have you with us. Uh, Ophi brings extensive knowledge and expertise. Uh, you know, TerraSky is a very well-established, trusted partner with VMware. Uh, they empower our customers to unlock the full potential of our VMware cross-cloud services and also overcome those obstacles along the way, which we know uh, there, there are many of those, uh, as we will hear today from, from OFA. But uh, a couple of things that I want to just uh, bring up, you know, TerraSky uh, has really got incredible expertise and they've earned numerous accolades, including the prestigious 2023 VMware Partner Value Award for EMEA. So want to just bring that up. Congratulations, Ophir, again. Uh, they, awesome. They have seven master service competencies, uh, which showcases really uh, their capabilities in those solution areas, uh, and also have additional 14 of their engineers have been recognized as VMware experts. So uh, I know I try to fit a lot in there, Ophir, but I, I wanted just to uh, uh, certainly demonstrate to our community here with us today, just um, how trusted uh, a partner you are, but also how much we certainly value the investment that you have made uh, in, 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 the, in the capabilities. So welcome. Thank you so much uh, for being with us, uh, and we're certainly looking forward uh, to getting some valuable insights from you today. So to get us started, uh, I would love it if you could just do a really quick introduction for those who don't know you or perhaps are not familiar with TerraSky. Yeah, of course. So first of all, thank you very much for hosting me. Uh, it's a pleasure to participate in those kinds of sessions, especially with you. Uh, uh, so thank you for that. Uh, I will introduce TerraSky. I assume that you have many questions, so I'll try to be short and focused. Uh, so TerraSky, we are a global solution integrator uh, working in, in different countries. We started in Israel, expanded to Europe, and now in the US as well. Uh, our speciality, we are focusing on building uh, enterprise-grade solutions for customers that starting on data center and expanding to public cloud or vice versa. And one of the unique uh, uh, capability we have is the fact that we build both uh, practices in public cloud and in the data center. And today, in most of the solutions that we are uh, providing to our customers, we know how to connect between the two different but similar worlds. Uh, we uh, invest a lot in knowledge and expertise. Basically, we are coming with knowledge for our customers. We are trying to work with our customers, understanding their business challenges and provide solutions for them. So happy to be here and uh, happy for having this conversation uh, and more to come. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for touching on that. And uh, we'll certainly talk a little bit more about the expansion, uh, which is which is very, very exciting. Uh, now, talking about the accomplishments that I had mentioned uh, earlier, and again, uh, sincere congratulations on the 2023 VMware Partner Value Award for Mia. Can you share with us 
uh, just how Terrorist Guy has effectively utilized VMware solutions to drive business growth and deliver that high value results for the customers that we know uh, you deliver over and over again. I'd love to just hear in your words um, how, how you're doing that. Yeah, of course. So first of all, thank you very much for the warm words. Uh, we're really proud to uh, get uh, this award. We received many awards in the last years, in the last few years, and we are very proud of them. Most of them are based on the real value that we are creating for our customer, and this is the most important thing for us. So basically, when we are coming to uh, uh, to the discussion with customers, we, we we need to we need to look in the customer eyes and to understand his pain. We need to understand the business challenges, and we need to understand what uh, uh, the outcome that the customer wants to create. Then we try to translate that to solutions. Solutions include technology as well. We never start with the technology. We start with the business. We need to understand the why question. Why the customer wants to do stuff. So uh, uh, we, our goal when we are working with customers is to make our customers successful in the organization. So we help them by providing solutions. And if I take VMware, VMware solutions, if I'm looking at the value proposition that VMware has as a solution, we believe, especially with uh, what we are delivering to our customers, that taking some of the products and some of the solutions as a response for business challenges like growth, like, uh, uh, like multi-cloud, like cloud native application, creating the innovation that customers are willing to achieve, this is exactly what we are doing with our customers. You know? At the end of the day, we need to understand the challenge, we find the solution, we, we, we tackle with the products, and we are helping our customers to adopt with confidence. That's what we are doing. Yeah, yeah. And and I, I think uh, based on sort of the area of expertise that you have, uh, it's an area of challenge for our customers right now because they don't necessarily have the internal capabilities to really drive the modernization that they're trying to drive, right? Which yeah. is the big issue. Yeah. One, yeah. Of, one of the things that we're saying to our customers, you know, at the end of the day, we are not here to, we don't know more than our customers, but we see much more uh, uh, deployments than any specific customers. We are coming with a lot of experience, we will speak about where we started and where we expanded, but we, our, our job is to save our customers the non-relevant decision that they are making, uh, leveraging the experience that we have. We want to save them time, we want to save them money, we want to help them to deliver faster. This is what we are doing from the experience that we are gaining for multiple customers. Yeah. Now I'm going to just pivot quickly. Um, you know, a year ago, I think it was 7th of July, right? You made a decision uh, to expand uh, from Tel Aviv, Israel. I know we had even had the discussion of uh, what's life like in uh, in New York, right? Yeah. Uh, big difference. Uh, you, you relocated your family. Uh, we were just having a bit of fun about that in terms of sort of how the kids have, have uh, responded to that. But could you provide for us just... Um, one, you know, how has that provided a unique opportunity for TerraSky, but also no doubt there's sort of been challenges as you work more in, the, in these global markets. Um, why, why the big expansion, right? Number one, um, what are those challenges that, you, that you're seeing and how has that adopted your, your strategy? Yeah, so first of all, yes, uh, uh, July 7th, uh, it was the weekend, and we celebrated as a family a year in the U.S. Uh, so, yeah, I relocated with my wife and the four kids to the New York office. Uh, people know or, 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 or people don't know, but we started in Israel in 2010. Uh, Israel, uh, it's a huge market in terms of technology. So many technologies started in Israel, and we have so many customers that are adopting technology very fast. And it created a situation that we started evaluating technologies that appear first in Israel and several years after in different markets. And it gave us a huge advantage, especially when we are coming to customers that want to explore new solutions and new technologies, 
we are coming with experience. Now, we, we started the expansion first to Europe. We opened our offices in Central Europe and expanding there. And uh, we also expanded the business to US. I, re I relocated myself to New York with a few other teammates from Israel, and we recruited people here. We recently opened an office in UK. And uh, I, I see it like it's, it's amazing to see the different challenges in the different markets. And what we are trying to do, we are trying to bring from our experience in the different markets uh, 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 to, to our customers. So the fact that we gain the technology experience in Israel and the exp experience to work with global enterprise customers in in US in Europe as well, that's for, for us it's amazing. It's amazing to see that. The reason why we decided we want to expand the, the business globally, we just identified the opportunity. We see huge opportunity for partners like TerraSky to expand the, expand the business to different geographies because customers are customers and they are dealing with the same challenges. And there is a huge opportunity, especially today, with all the changes in the world, with the IT, with the digital transformation for partners that invest in knowledge, that invest in expertise, that can help customers to achieve their business, their business needs. Yeah. Yeah, and when you say, you know, uh, you've got the same challenges, um, I would imagine what, 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 you, what you're referencing there is, uh, it's the same discussion around cloud solutions, multi-cloud, you know, the rationalization, uh, whether it's digital transformation, but you may be seeing it uh, at different times, meaning that you've got sort of more of these emerging markets, developing markets, more entrepreneurial, um, but then you've also got what I call more of the conservative markets as well. They don't move as quickly. Uh, you know, some of the larger global customers move a little slower sometimes. So uh, I, you're probably seeing it in different phases based on the market, but it's the same challenges. Definitely, yes. And what we are trying to do, we are just trying to, you know, to take this experience from, from markets that are adopting very fast and to expose that to uh, uh, markets that are like more conservatives. Sharing this, in, this experience can save a lot of time and a lot of money for customers that they see that we already did that. We know what are the risks. We know what you need to prepare for. This is, this is the value that we are trying to bring to our customers. And that is why, uh, you know, we do consider uh, TerraSky to be an established leader in the cloud solutions because you're able to bring that uh, global perspective and really add that value back to uh, our customers, meaning your customers and our customers, right? You know, with that, I I'm curious, I I'd love to know, what are some of the key trends uh, that you're observing in the cloud industry um, and, and how does TerraSky plan on capitalizing on those opportunities? Yeah, so cloud uh, is an interesting discussion in the last few years, you know. I think, you know, I, when, I'm, uh, when I analyze all the changes that customers are doing when it comes to cloud, we have the first customers, like the first years that just move everything possible to, pub to public cloud. They, did, they just did lift and shift projects, moving everything to public cloud or starting a new company 100% in public cloud. Today, I think it's, it, was, it has been enough time for customers to, to review again the decisions that they made around cloud and asking themselves why they are moving workloads from data center to public cloud. I think that today customers are changing the approach uh, and they are trying to understand what are the outcome should be for, for their clients. It can be like internal clients or their customers outside. And, and what is the impact? What is the deliverable that they want to create for them? And I think that now customers are asking themselves the right questions when it comes to public cloud. And why we are running this application in public cloud and not in private cloud. There is new application now. What are the criteria that based on them, we take decision. Are we going to run it on the data center or the public pl cloud? Our job is to make sure that we are building a, a seamless infrastructure for our customers, 
and giving them the ability to run their application regardless if they decide to do it on the data center or the public cloud. To create the same type of experience for their customers when they are consuming, consuming infrastructure or platform, it doesn't matter where they are running it. Then the cloud, the cloud decision is becoming maybe financial, uh, architectural, uh, time to market or business related. This is, we want to give our customers the freedom of choice yeah. to create hybrid cloud or multi-cloud solutions with the same level of uh, 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 user experience uh, to take the right decisions. This is when, when I'm saying connecting the business needs to the technology, this is exactly what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. And along with that, you know, I'm sure our audience here today would love to hear more about your innovative approach to leveraging uh, those cloud technologies. Can you just highlight uh, perhaps some of the, you know, exciting projects or solutions that uh, the team is currently working on and, and perhaps um, where you've seen the business really transform with our customers from the work that you've been doing? Yeah, of course. So we learn all the time. You know, I told you that one of the advantages we have is the fact that we see so many different environments and we see different approach for different customers for the same, the same problem. So we, in a certain point, we decided to invest a lot in building TerraSky solutions for those kinds of challenges. So we invested a lot in creating different frameworks for customers that want to run on multi-cloud or customers that are in the process of uh, digitalizing some of their applications and modernization of data center. And we just brought into this framework all the experience we have, all the different uh, products and solutions that we believe are the right solution to, uh, 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 to, to, to provide to our customers. And we invested a lot in building those frameworks. So today, when we have a customer that is uh, speaking with us about multi-cloud approach or about building a platform for, for customers that want to modernize some of the applications, we have frameworks for that. We invested in that. We are not uh, developing software, but we are developing solutions. Yeah. Uh, this is one thing. The second thing is we all understand that uh, uh, the solutions today in this area are becoming much more complicated than in the past. Uh, the complexity creates uh, the need for, 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 for expertise within the organizations. So we are trying to simplify stuff for our customers. So we are investing a lot in building day two operation services for our customers, helping our customers to adopt the technologies, the right technologies. We integrate that with uh, advanced managed services capabilities. So focus on the most complicated solutions. We want to give managed services for customers on the CICD on their pipelines, on the multi-cloud, not on the infrastructure. I'm not, I'm not competing with EC2 on AWS or uh, VM with uh, Google or Microsoft. This is the value of TerraSky. This is where we want to invest our time. Yeah, yeah, it makes total sense. And, uh, you know, as a thought leader in the cloud space, I'd love to understand what advice would you give businesses that are considering adopting uh, as you call sort of this this uh, solution architecture, let's call it, right? Um, what are the risks and the benefits and how can they make uh, better informed decisions that align with your long-term strategy? Yeah, so it, it comes to the end of the question. At the end of the day, we want to give our customers the ability to take the right decision for their business. That's what we want to achieve. Uh, and therefore, we created those platforms for our customers to help them to, to, to take those kinds of decisions. So we understand that the challenges and the risks and the thoughts around moving more close to cloud. Uh, but if you build it uh, on the right way, if you take under consideration before you start, you know, when you start the, uh, the architectural decisions and when, we, when you start the understanding where we want to, uh, uh, to end with the project, then you know you take under consideration different different topics that relevant for customers and then you build it we think about time to market we think about uh, complexity about uh, reliability about speed about agility and cloud is not a magic world that solves everything you need to build it right otherwise you will be in a solution we have so many uh, projects running right now for customers that just moved workload to the public cloud 
and they have zero flexibility to, to uh, distribute workloads between different public clouds or with the data center. So technology approach like infrastructure as code, policy as code, things that will really give the customers the ability to choose different. Yeah. You know, when I, uh, when I think about Tanzu in our partner ecosystem, uh, the top partner that always comes to mind for me is TerraSky. Uh, if, if there was anything happening around modern applications, Tanzu, I'm always, you know, TerraSky, TerraSky is who you got to speak to, right? I, I would love to just uh, hear sort of your perspective on, on how you believe TerraSky has really um, helped customers with the uh, sort of transformation to cloud, uh, their digital transformation journey, and those capabilities and, and sort of how that's helped around the multi-cloud deployment, because I know uh, that's a major investment that you've made uh, in terms of your capabilities uh, and certainly uh, helping a lot of our joint customers uh, around specifically Tanzu. So we'd love to just get your, your point of view on that. Yeah. So most important thing to understand is when we as a company take a decision to invest in a product, we first need to make sure that we understand the technology and we believe in the technology. I cannot yeah. sell a solution that my team doesn't believe in the technology. Mm -hmm. And as a, as a solution integrator, we are familiar with the competition very well. Uh, so we did... A few years ago, we did a, a, a major investment in Tanzu because first, we believe that in terms of technology, this is the right solution for the market. And if you divide the, the product line of this product family Tanzu, I'm speaking about data, I'm speaking about Kubernetes, I'm speaking about platform engineering, we believe that the technology is the best in the market. So we invested a lot in understanding all the uh, uh, deep uh, dive, you know, we did, we did so many deep dive sessions to understand every bit in the, in the platform. And we invest a lot, uh, we invest a lot as a company in the technology. Then we also uh, uh, integrated some of our uh, architects and engineers with the most uh, common open source projects that uh, VMware adopted as part of the solutions of Tanzu. By the way, this is one of the most uh, important things when I'm speaking with customers uh, about the fact that uh, Tanzu, if you take the Kubernetes, the, the, the Kubernetes platform is the closest one to the upstream Kubernetes. So if you want to get the flexibility that you are asking for and the agility that you are asking for, Tanzu is the right solution for you. If I'll take it to the next level, and when, when, when I shared about the framework that we built for customers, going to microservices, choosing the orchestration is, is just the first step. But then you need to make sure that it will be enterprise grade. So we need to take care of uh, multi-cluster management and security and networking and storage and data protection. And then once you have the infrastructure ready, the most important thing is the software development, the developer experience. And there again, VMware, VMware did a huge, uh, a, a, a huge product, uh, TAP, uh, like Tracy, Tracy and Planner, TAP, Tanzu application platform, the same. We, we laugh about it a little bit. <laughs> uh, but we really believe that, you know, at the end of the day, this is like, if you want to create an impact, a real impact for developers, this is the solution that connects everything, connects all the dots. And again, Vimor took the most common open source solutions and adopted them and just integrated everything to one solution, one platform. We are super exciting, excited about, uh, about uh, the product family. We really believe, you know, it, sometimes it takes time and the process is long and you start small and you grow with that. But we believe that in the next like few years, this is something that uh, we must make sure that we are investing and our customers are adopting. Um, yeah. We are super excited about Tanzu. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, you, you, you spoke about uh, Israel being the, uh, the sort of, entrepreneurial land of a lot of you know technologies and uh i know uh specifically with Tanzu, i, I think um you got in uh as one of the early adopters i would say of really um going deep understanding capability 
and also understanding the audience because uh, you know, I remember you once saying to me, uh, you've got to win the mind share of the developer, right? Uh, if you look at, you know, multi-cloud and cloud solutions in general, uh, yes, you go to the lines of business and yes, you go to, you know, IT and engineering. But when you're talking about Tanzu specifically, you start to get into what I would call uh, the developer world because you're talking about Kubernetes, you're talking about philosophical developer beliefs right yeah. and it's a different uh it's a you have to win the minds and hearts of the developers right and so i think that is something that was very important uh that you taught me uh around the tenzu you know uh, yeah. portfolio this is super super important you know we had to change uh, the way that we are approaching customers. We had to change the people that we are speaking with them in the organizations. The people that are taking decisions for solutions and products like Tanzu are not the same people that are taking decisions for the vSphere or the NSX in the data center. So it's a totally change the process and how we are approaching customers. I agree with you. At the end of the day, you know, when it comes to developers, there is this concept saying that if you write the code, you own the code. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, with Tanzu, with the solutions from Tanzu, if you take the infrastructure with TKO and TAP, this is exactly what we are saying to the developers. Focus on writing the code. We will build the platform behind the scenes that will support all those challenges. You don't need to learn what is Kubernetes. You don't need to understand how the infrastructure works. We build a solution for you that gives you everything. You focus on the core. So again, when, it, when I'm going back to creating business impact on the business for, 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 for R&Ds, for example, this message of like a, a time, faster time to market and the ability to onboard developers in like zero time, it's 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 a huge huge asset for the business. It's huge. Uh, this is how you create impact. Yeah, yeah, and definitely, I believe that's been a key differentiator for 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 Terra Sky for sure. No no question. I want to um, you know I know that uh, you've got that sort of innovative spirit, right, within the the company. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to know how do you. How do you foster that culture of innovation? I mean, what programs do you have? Do you have programs in place? Like, how are you encouraging your employees and, and your teams to be uh, continually thinking creatively? Um, how, how, how are you looking at continuous learning and really keeping them innovative? Yeah, yeah this is super, super interesting. And, you know, some of of some part of our business started with like personal initiatives of engineers in our, in our teams, you know, people that said, oh, this is super interesting technology. Let's evaluate this one. So first of all, we have, we have zero boundaries when it comes to technology. And mm -hmm. uh, we started, it started with initiative of uh, different people in the organization to invest in different, uh, in different technologies, their curiosity and always trying to think, what is the next? What is the, the next technology? This is something that is part of TerraSky. We always think what will be the next technology that we need to invest, and we start invest. Usually, it takes us years to become like a leader in technology. It was the same thing with VMware, by the way. When we started with VMware, it was all about infrastructure, and we invested in private cloud even before there was like a, you know few few deployments. So we try to take this uh, uh, behavior of, of, of people in the organization and create a different, different programs. We invest technology in every department in TerraSky. Uh, I can tell you, I can share with you that uh, in the last, in the last uh, year, uh, we invest a lot in AI, trying to think how we can automate many of the things that we are doing. Our professional services organization creates product, almost every project. If we believe that one project is going to happen in more than one customer, then we create a product for it. We want to make sure that our team are super efficient, that we want to make sure that we are uh, adopting those technologies that can create, you know, create more value for our customers. If we are doing it to ourselves and we can share that with our customers, that's amazing. This is where we want to be. We want to make sure, you know, there are no boundaries when it comes to technology. 
I never stop the team. We are investing a lot of you know, substan substantial time of our engineers just to think how we can improve and what can be the next thing in technology that can help our customers. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's critical. You know, um, I know everybody is uh, on the heels of AI right now, of course. Uh, but I would say that um, uh, it's all pretty fascinating because I do believe that uh, the speed of innovation, uh, in fact, I was at a Forrester event uh, and the CEO got up on stage, this is a few weeks ago, and he said, we always tell our customers to go slower and with caution. This is one technology we're saying go fast and go now and go bold, right? Yeah. And uh, it's interesting because obviously uh, the key is how you monetize it, right? Um, and that's where I think, you know, uh, that's not everyone's figured that out yet. Yeah, but and you, you don't need to be afraid of it because, you know, at the end of the yeah. day, if you make sure that your team will focus on like, like the most cutting edge technology, the, the next thing for our customers, then let's let's do let's do everything with automation. Let's think about the next challenge. Let's think about what will create the, the most impact on our customers in the future. Focus on that. It's not about job protection. It's not about the fact that AI will replace everyone in the industry. It's mm -hmm. not there. We need to adopt it everywhere we can, everywhere we can, and to think about the next thing. Yeah, totally agree. So uh, just uh, in wrapping up our session, um, I, I'm curious, I, I want to hear what your vision is for TerraSky over the next five years. Uh, and also, you know, how do you see uh, TerraSky being able to stay at the forefront of this sort of evolving cloud landscape with AI and all the other things and, and also uh, staying true to, I believe, what, what you care most about, which is the customer and the customer success? Yeah, so when you say customer, I think that, you know, we started in 2020, this 2010, this company, and my partner and the president of the company, Michael Boston, I was working for him, and he, he taught me what, what customer obsession is. Mm -hmm. So everything starts with the customer at the end of the day. So we always think about the customer, customer is in the center all the time, and and then we start to think about technology and then we start to think about the services that we are providing for our customers. And if we are looking five years ahead, we want to, we want to be the best in what we are doing. We invest a lot and we invested from day zero in the company year over year. And we are long runner and this is where we are looking. Like five years from now, we want to continue empowering our customers. We want to continue investing in the technologies around the multi-cloud, around the cl cloud native applications, Kubernetes as infrastructure up to the developer experience, AI technologies. We want to continue working with our customers with the same uh, 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 culture that we, we created as a company. We have core values that we adopted from day zero in the company. And this is how we want to continue growing with the company. I see huge opportunities in different countries. I think that uh, uh, the businesses in, in US will continue growing because we see the demand that is coming from our customers and we'll continue investing, uh, investing with them. And when it comes to Vimor technology, I think that Vimor is taking the right direction with the investment in the technology, especially around multi-cloud and cloud native applications and developers. Uh, 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 we just want to continue adopting that. That's what we want to do in the future. Fantastic. Very, very good. Wonderful. So, uh, Ofer, I, I mean, just a great dialogue. And, uh, you know, again, thank you so much for being uh, such a valued partner and for all your, for all your insights. Uh, before we conclude, though, uh, I'd like to just add a touch of fun and continue our tradition uh, on our VM Live Thought Leadership session. So we're going to do a quick round of uh, trivia. And Ofer, I'll uh, I'll handle I'll, I'll have you handle that for us. Okay, let's do it. So I know you've got uh, some prizes prepared out of that marketing closet. Um, let's go through some of the questions, uh, and the winner will claim the prize by emailing uh, Teresa T Nelson at vmware.com. That's uh, T Nelson at vmware.com. 
So we're going to use the chats feature for this. And Ofe, if you'll read out the first question. Of course. So the question is, how many VMware competencies does TerraSky have? And Teresa, if you'll uh, let us know when the right answer is in the chat. Okay, we got an answer. Do you want to go to the next one? Yep, sounds good. Okay, Ophir, I'm going to go ahead and hit the enter so that we can you can read the question, okay? Okay, no problems. I'm sorry, it's not moving. There we go. Okay, so the next question is, what partner connect level has TerraSky reached? Okay, and we have a winner and the right answer was... Awesome. Okay. Congratulations to both. <laughs> <laughs> next question. Okay, the third question. How many VMware awards has TerraSky achieved in the past five years? I said it a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go for the answer. Okay. And now I think we have one more question, Ophir. Yeah. Okay, the last question. How many V experts does TerraSky have today? I hope you were listening. Ready for our answer? Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing. Um, and I'm going to open it up to Q&A. Sounds really good. Okay. So we have a question from Tim and he says, hi, Ophir, thank you for your great partnership with VMware. When you talk about scaling your managed solutions to solve business outcomes, what do you see as the next big opportunity? Mm, good question. Yeah, so when it comes to managed services, we invested a lot of time to, uh, to, to answer ourselves the question of what would differentiate TerraSky from others in the market. This is something that we ask ourselves all the time because, again, we want to make sure that we create value. Uh, and the answer that we, we gave ourselves was uh, we want to create managed services for areas that are very complicated in the application modernization part. So we are going to announce soon on our managed services value proposition. And it's going to include things like uh, 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 everything on top of the Kubernetes, Kubernetes itself. We see a huge opportunity on the framework around how to manage the, the, the Kubernetes platform, how to make sure it will be secured, how to protect it and also to build managed services around the CICD, building the pipelines and managing the pipelines for our customers. Okay, great. Um, we have another question that is, why are VMware competencies important to a company like TerraSky? And how do these competencies enable them to deliver superior solutions um, to service their clients? So, you know, you can, you can answer the question in general, why master service competency is important. I can say from our point of view, from TerraSky point of view, as, as I mentioned, you know, we are coming with knowledge. We are trying to, we learn and we invest a lot in the technology before we are going to our customers. So for us, master service competency give us a, a, like a, a, some kind of an approval or uh, the, 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 the fact that we know what we are going to speak about with our customers. So we are trying to be the best in what we are doing. This is the reason why we invested in all the master service competency. 
So we come with knowledge. We need to make sure that we have the knowledge before we go to our customers. Mm -hmm. Great. We have another question. Is when you discuss about the framework, is it relevant to any step of the journey of the customer? Great question. And the short answer is yes. When we build the frameworks, the different frameworks for multi-cloud and cloud native applications, we took under consideration the fact that customers already started with something. So we divided the frameworks to different work streams and we can run every work stream independent, ind independently. So yes, we, we take this under consideration. Great, great questions. And we have some more, but like oh, just a friendly reminder partners, keep reading your questions coming. These sessions are really about you and your engagement with us. So no question, you know, keep them coming. Um, Ophir, there's another question. Curious um, as to your POV on the value of AWS, Azure, and hyperscalers in general, and how you advise the VMware account teams to leverage these partnerships. Okay, so first of all, we are working with the, the big hyperscalers. We are working with AWS, with uh, Microsoft, with, uh, with Google as well. Uh, we see them almost with every customer, at least one of them. Uh, and we see more and more uh, workloads are moving to the public cloud. Uh, we first try to understand where we need to compete and where we need to coexist. So if, if I'll take, for example, solutions that come in front of them or for multi-cloud or for uh, uh, platform engineering and developer experience, we, we are building Val mutual value proposition together with the hyperscalers for customers. For the hyperscaler, it's good because we drive more consumption for them. For us, it's great because we create the same uh, level of uh, experience for customers that are running in public cloud in the data center as well. Uh, I think that we need to, uh, I think we need to leverage that more than what we are doing. We as, a, as, as TerraSky and VMware together with the hyperscalers, uh, because we have we have no other chance. Our customers are moving them. We need to make sure that we are supporting that, and we are not convincing our customers that this is not the good or the the bad the way to go. Great. We have another question that came in anonymous. Um, Fourteen um, V experts. I want to ask you a question. How has TerraSky leveraged these expertise in their recognition of these? Um, to provide enhancement value and support with its customers within VMware deployments? So first of all, this is something that is coming from, from the team. Our engineers want to be the best in what they are doing. So they invest a lot all the time to be the best in what they are doing. And I, I love it. I support the team always. And, and when an individual is investing so much time and we are as a company supporting that, at the end of the day, when it comes to the customer, it creates the impact, you know. At the end of the day, customer wants to make sure that there is someone on the other side that understands this problem and can solve it like fast. And the fact that they are getting and they are gaining this knowledge and the certification and the competency, they just put them in the front line of uh, uh, in the front line of the technology all the time. And we embrace that. We we love that. We we continue investing in getting more and more knowledge for our engineers. Great. Just a couple thank yous in the um, chat um, that I see. Um, Tracy, I'm going to turn it over to you for any last minute comments and a quick wrap up. Yeah, sounds fantastic. So I think, first of all, uh, just a, a very, very sincere thank you uh, to Ofa for being with us today and for sharing certainly his insights, his knowledge. Uh, and again, we are we are so grateful for uh, this incredible partnership uh, that continues to go from from strength to strength. Uh, secondly, want to really thank our VMware partner community. Uh, we really love doing these thought leadership series for you. Uh, we also want to uh, let you know we do go and share this also with with our sales teams as well so that they can too be educated on what our partners are doing uh, with, our, with our customers. Uh, it's really important that we have, you know, enriching discussions. So if you have any feedback, uh, if there's specific topics that you would like us to address on these thought leadership series, please let us know. Um, thank you again, everyone, for your time. Uh, we're looking forward to the next session, which will be on, in September. And also, uh, we have VMware Explore coming up in August.
and and that's in the US and Barcelona in November. So please don't forget to register. And uh, we certainly look forward to seeing all of you there. Thank you both. Bye for now. Bye everyone.